Peixalda is ICC with help from Egg, both represent Next Clan Gaming. In this video, we will be taking a look at the SFC30. The SFC30 is a Bluetooth controller in the form of a Super Famicom controller. You can also get an SNES30, which would be the equivalent of the Super Nintendo with the purple buttons instead of the color ones we have here. There is also the Nintendo equivalent, NES30, and the Famicom equivalent, the FC30. First, we will be unboxing. The controller is packed well. It has a slip cover over the box, and then we open it up to reveal our SFC30. The size and shape are identical to the Super Famicom. It has a sturdy build. It's not a cheap feeling controller. The digital pad feels good, as well as the buttons. Inside the box, we have two more additional boxes. The first box has two pieces. The first is this piece. They refer to it in the manual as a ring stand. And the other item is a keychain, the FC30 anniversary keychain. The other small box is just the USB charging cable. Overall, it is packed very well. There is no wasted space and there are no wasted materials, but yet it is still packaged very well and solid. To do the firmware on these controllers, you will need to go to your specific website. If you have an SNES30, NES30, or FC30, check the links in the description. I will give each link for each controller. Download the zip file of the newest update, as it will have all the previous updates. Extract the files and launch the executable for the operating system you have. I have Windows, so I will be clicking Windows and then the EXE. Once you have this window here, we now pick up the controller. Make sure your controller is off. To go into firmware mode, hold L, R, and start until both LEDs blink and then let go. Now you are ready to plug in the USB cable. Plug one side into your controller and the other side into your PC or Mac. Once you plug in, you will see the button is now clickable. Click the update button and select the firmware update dat file. Click OK to update and wait. A few moments later, you are finished. Click OK and now you can close all of that with your controller having the newest firmware. To pair this controller with the Retron 5, first you need to upgrade the firmware. So if you have not done that, rewind this video to the second chapter and then come back here. First, make sure you have a controller plugged in and power on your Retron 5. Once powered on, go down to settings, then go down to manage Retron 5 controllers. Once you are at this menu, pick up your controller and with the controller off, hold L, R, B, A, and start until you see both LEDs light up. Then both LEDs will turn off and the blue LED will slowly blink. Once you see this, click pair controller on the Retron 5, wait just a moment and it should be successful. This last bit is just a quick tip. If you haven't played it for a bit, when you turn on the controller, don't just hold start for three seconds to turn it on. The controller will not work with the Retron. So here, we turn the controller back off to show you. When you turn the controller on, hold L, R, B, A, and start. And once it boots up and starts, you are good to go. You don't need to click pair on the Retron 5 again. Just make sure you turn the controller on in this fashion. And now to show that it works, we're gonna play some Cowboy Kid. So now that it's loading, with all Retron 5 games, you have to wait for it to load. And there we go, we got Cowboy Kid. So Egg is gonna run around a little bit, just to show that it works. So there you go. Cowboy Kid on the NES with 
the SFC30 Bluetooth controller. So thank you for watching everybody. Thanks to Egg for all the help. I hope the video helped you guys out. If there's anything else, any questions, just leave a comment. I'll get back to you. Peace.